All right. So. All right, so um, I'm Chaplain Corbett, and we're going to get started here in just one minute. If you do call in, if you've called in, please make sure you put your phone on mute. But we're going to go ahead and get started this morning with our worship service. I am glad that uh, you are joining us either by phone or by Facebook Live, and we do have a select few in our congregation today that are, again, spread out. So we're going to be uh, conducting this worship service and, and we're going to try to do this in a spirit of reverence and a spirit of love for our Lord because uh, he certainly is someone that deserves our respect, our honor, our love, our appreciation. And um, Psalm 150 should put us in the right mood for praising our Lord this morning. Psalm 150 says, praise the Lord, praise God in his sanctuary, praise him in his mighty firmament, praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of trumpets. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Bow with me. Father, thank you for this day. And we ask your blessing on us as we worship together in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good morning. I'm Master Sergeant Garrison. Psalm 61 says, Hear my cry, O God. Attend to my prayer. From the end of the earth I will cry unto you when my heart is overwhelmed. Lead me to that rock that is higher than I. For you have been a shelter to me, a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in your tabernacle forever. I will trust in the shelter of your wings. I'm thankful today that we have a God who loves us, a God who protects us, a God who is always watching out for us. The calamity that we have that we're enduring right now, as we said last month, with the virus and then all the things that we have going on in our country, we have to constantly look to the rock of our salvation for our protection. So I'm going to pray with us as well right quick, but if we may. Father, we come to you this morning thanking you, God, for the day that you've given us and for the promises that we have in your word that you are our tower, you're our fortress, and you're our strength. And God, we pray that th this morning that you'd be right here with us. Where the Bible says, we're two or more gathered in your name, that you're there also. God, let your spirit be felt. I pray and ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. So, G, if you will join me and the lieutenant yes, uh, here. Lieutenant uh, Hicks is going to help me. And what we're going to do is we're going to share Psalm 8 this morning as our responsive reading. And I'll read the uh, first verse. Mm -hmm the odd verses and my comrades here will respond with the uh, even. even verses. I'll read the uh, odd verses, they'll respond with the even verses. So, O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth who have set your glory above the heavens. Out of the mouth, mouth of babes and nursing and infants, infants, you have ordained strength, strength, strength because, because of, of your enemies, enemies that you may you silence, silence the enemy and, the and your avenger. avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've had ordained, what is, what is man, man that, that you're mindful of him, and, and the son of man that, that you visit him? For you have made him a little lower than the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. You have you made, made him, him to have dominion over the works of your hands. hands. You have, you have put, put all things under his feet. All sheep and oxen, even the beasts of the field, the birds of the air, and the fish of the sea that pass through the paths of the sea. O Lord, our Lord, how excellent is your name in all the earth. Amen. In just a moment, uh, Lieutenant Hicks is going to come and do our pastoral prayer. But if you have any prayer needs that you'd like to share amongst us this morning uh, who are here, uh, if you have uh, someone you want to pray for, please uh, share that. Uh, if someone's on the phone, they can uh, mute, uh, unmute or uh, Facebook Live. If you have a prayer request, please, uh, you can type that in as well. So does anybody have something they want to pray about this morning? Uh, my Sergeant Huggins, Don and Scott were in an accident last night. Oh, okay. Mass Sergeant Huggins. Okay, and they were in an accident. What, was serious injury or? Uh, they are home right now. Okay. I think there's a couple of broken bones. Hmm. Okay, well, that's still... We have a tropical storm coming up in the Gulf, and we have uh, COVID-19 we're still dealing with, and all kinds of things going on in our country as well. 
and uh, we want to lift those up. Any other prayer needs we want to pray about today? Lift up our governor, our president, uh, our adjutant general, the, the entire leadership. Okay. If not, Lieutenant uh, Hicks, if you would please have our prayer this morning. All right, thank you. Uh, this is Lieutenant Hicks. Would you bow your heads with me as I say the pastoral prayer? Heavenly Father, we are blessed to take this time out of our busy schedules during this month's drill to come together to worship you. Though we may be dealing with some hardships in our lives and witnessing some turbulent times that are happening in our eyes, we know, O oh Lord, that you are in control of all things. So as we hear Chaplain Corbett's sermon today, we pray that your creative spirit be in at work in our hearts and minds as we strive to continue to live in obedience according to your will. Amen. Amen. So this morning, what we want to look at uh, for our scripture, it comes from Matthew chapter 28, and we'll be looking at verses 16 through 20. And um, the Bibles we have here, the few Bibles, are New King James versions. Um, then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee to the mountain which Jesus had appointed for them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So we ask God this morning to bless his word as we consider it together, and I know that he will because he's promised he will do that. So as we consider this passage of scripture today, I want us to consider it from the idea of the word all. I'd like us to consider that word. You know, chaplains often in their briefings will have a chaplain's word of the day. You've probably seen that on briefing slides. And, and the word I want us to consider for Matthew 28 this morning is the word all. The word all. Now, I've had the privilege of being chaplain for the 20th Special Forces Group in the past, and I've uh, met quite a few special operators in my time in that regard, plus other times as well. And they are some of the most intense soldiers I've ever met. They really are. They are all in all the time. Uh, special operators are all in all the time. They're either 100% or they're nothing. I mean, there's, there's no halfway with them. Um, on another Another idea, though, that, that comes to mind is an old joke. It's a bad joke. The barnyard animals were trying to figure out what to do for the, for the farmer for his birthday. And so the chickens decided this. He said, they proposed, this is what we need to do for his birthday. We need to serve him breakfast in bed. What we need to do is cook bacon and eggs and serve it to him in bed. And the pigs immediately objected and said, all right, now, bacon and eggs for you chickens is an offering. But for pigs, it's a real sacrifice. All right? They, a pig, to do the bacon part of the bacon and eggs, would have to be all in, right? Mm -hmm. Well, if there's anyone that's ever been all in, it was Jesus Christ. He's all God and all human. And in these passages of scriptures, uh, after the resurrection, Jesus met with his disciples, and when he gave him his final directions, the word all was a very prominent part. So what he says at the beginning of this passage of Scripture is that he has all authority. All authority. Now, after the resurrection, they gathered on the seashore, they gathered in different places, and there were some that worshipped him, but some had doubts. You've also, also heard the um, military saying, when in charge, take charge, right? You've, known, you've heard that. When you're in charge, take charge. Well, that's what Jesus did. Jesus was in charge. Now, we have to understand, He's all God all the time, and He's all human all the time, and He is going to take charge of this situation. And what He did was He asserted His authority as sovereign over all things. He had all authority. That means He has sovereignty. That's what that means. Now, our government is sovereign on this earth. The state government is sovereign in Alabama. The federal government is sovereign 
over the United States. But both Alabama and our federal government, those governments are sovereign, but they're limited. They're limited by the constitutions. They're limited by the Bill of Rights. They're limited by uh, the fact that uh, we as citizens have rights uh, that we exercise on a regular basis. And even now, there are people who are demonstrating and, and sharing their opinions because they have the right to do that. Okay, so our state is sovereign, but it is not all sovereign. Our nation is sovereign, but it is not all sovereign. Jesus, however, is all sovereign. He, he runs it. He owns the whole thing. I was a company commander years ago in the Louisiana Army National Guard. I was an MP company commander. And um, there was one day I was talking with somebody, and I can't remember who it was, uh, about property, some property, and says, I don't care what you say, all of this is mine. I own it all. And I did for the state of Louisiana and for the USP and FO. I owned everything. And they gave me a flag, a guide, a copy of our guide on at the end of my time as a company commander. And, and on the back of the plaque, they wrote on there, you owned it all. But God does own it all, and so does Jesus, and he has all authority. Now, here's the thing. He has given some of that authority to us, the church. He has told us uh, that we have authority. We, we think that... Uh, that Satan has authority in heaven, oh, excuse me, we think that Satan has authority in, in hell, that he runs hell. He doesn't run hell. God runs hell. And actually what Jesus said to Peter, he says, I, that you are Peter on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Part of that authority of Jesus has been given to the church, and we need to exercise that authority. But also we need to remember that, that God has authority over us individually. Jesus said, I have all authority, and that just also includes us. We Americans are a proud and rebellious lot. We started in rebellion, right? We think we know better, and we think we have the right path. My, my wife's a kindergarten teacher. And she loves this story. This did not happen to her, but she loves this story because there was a kindergarten teacher observing her children in a the classroom. They were drawing one day. And she went up to a little girl and said, what are you drawing? And, and the little girl said, I'm drawing God. And the teacher said, well, nobody knows what God looks like. And without missing a beat, the little girl said, well, when I'm done, they will. <laughs> we are proud and rebellious. But we are under the authority of Jesus, and we need to remember that. 1 Corinthians 6.20 says, For you are bought at a price, therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. So we are God's, and Jesus has all authority over us. But here's the thing. Not only did Jesus talk about his authority, all authority, he also talked about all nations. In this passage, he gave his people a mission. And that mission was to take knowledge of him to all the peoples of the earth. This is our task. He wants God to, he wants all people to know him. He wants all people to understand truth. He wants all people to be free from the lies of Satan. And he wants us to be his tools to make that happen. He wants all of us to do this. He wants us to do that. And you know what's interesting about that is we don't have the ability to do that. We just don't. Uh, we don't have the ability to do what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus walked with the disciples for, for three years. He walked with them daily. And he knew them like the back of his hand. And he was not surprised when the disciples ran away the night that he was portrayed. He was not surprised that Peter denied him before the Sanhedrin. He, he, wasn't, he, he wasn't surprised on the day that he met that some people had doubts. He wasn't surprised that Thomas doubted. He knows people. And he knows that we need power. You know that old, the TV show Home Improvement? Remember that show? And they had the joke about more power, needing more power. Well, we need more power. But here's what the interesting thing is. In Acts 1.8, God knows we need more power, and He tells us, You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, 
And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. He wants us to be his witnesses and he wants us to have the power to do that work. So today we have the Holy Spirit. Today we have the full counsel of the word of God. Today we have the church to help us and encourage us. Today we have our testimonies. Uh, we were talking about Sunday school material before this, and we have all kinds of people who are writing good material for us to grow and to use in our work. We have so much ability, so much more than the disciples did. And the disciples in their ministry went to all nations, and so do we need to go to all nations. Now, you might think about the disciples and say, hey, you know, well, they, you know, when they say, you know, go to Jerusalem and Judea, uh, that, uh, uh, that they had a home field advantage because they were from there, right? Well, they weren't. The disciples were not from Galilee, or excuse me, from Jerusalem. The disciples were not from um, Judea, and the disciples were not from Samaria. You know, the disciples were from Galilee. They were up from north Israel. See, Israel, things are reversed to, to America. In the north is where all the rural people are. In the south is where all the urban people are. It's a little different than, than here in America. We're, we think, so when you think of Galilee, think of Alabama or Tennessee or, or Georgia, right? When you think of Jerusalem and Judea, think of New York and Pennsylvania and New Jersey. And then you got the right mental. And these are folks from Alabama going up to... New York, and Jesus was saying, be a witness for me in New York. They didn't have a home field advantage. Well, you know what? We don't have a home field advantage either because we are strangers in a strange land. This is not our home. Our home is somewhere else. But God gave the disciples power to do this work. He gives us power to do this work as well. So we see all authority is from Jesus. All nations is our task. All power has been given to us from Jesus. We see all see, so all things. Jesus said, teach them all things that I have instructed you in. You know, we need to be full gospel preachers. Now, I don't want to say it, for, I'm not saying that from a denominational standpoint, because I know there are some full gospel churches. I'm not talking about that. But what we need to do is to share the full truth of God for everyone, the full gospel. We don't need people to be in ignorance. Now, it doesn't take much to be saved. You don't have to know a lot to be saved. All you need to know that is that you're a sinner and Jesus died for you and that if you let Jesus be your Savior, you will be forgiven for your sins. That's all you need to know to be saved. But our task is not to just save people. Our task is to make disciples. Jesus said, go into all nations and make disciples of all peoples. So there's a lot you need to know to be a disciple. There's an awful lot. When you join the army, you know a little bit. You, you, know, you know what it is to be a soldier when you finish basic training. You know a little bit more what it means to be a soldier when you're in AIT. But you don't know really what it means to be a soldier until you've been around for a while when you've gone through those different training events and when you've been to ATs and you've been on deployments, then you know what it really means to be a soldier. It takes time to develop a mature soldier. It takes time and effort to develop a mature disciple. And there are a lot of things we need to tell them. We need to tell them the full gospel. We need to tell them things that, like I said, Jesus was the son of man and he came to seek and save that which was lost. We need to tell them that we're to love God with all our being, that if we love Jesus, we will keep his commandments. And we need to teach him what those commandments are. We need to love God with all our heart, our soul, our mind. We need to love our neighbors as ourselves. And we need to obey the commands of Jesus and we need to make disciples. So here's something we got to remember. Before we can make disciples, we have to be disciples. Doctors teach doctors. Lawyers teach lawyers. Carpenters, master carpenters teach carpenters, right? Warrant officers teach warrant officers. We need to be disciples if we're going to make disciples. We need to grow up and be mature. And we need to obey God. And we don't want to disobey our king. 
We don't want to be found disobeying our king. Listen to what Hebrews chapter 10 says in verses 24 through 27. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as is the manner of some. Now, during COVID-19, we had no choice but not meet in many, many but, but, but there are folks, you know, before COVID-19 that did not get together as they should with their other brothers. That, that's what I, he's talking about here. But we exhort, we, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. For if we sin willfully after having received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sin, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fiery indignation which will devour the adversaries. You know, there are a lot of people who are wanting justice in our country today. And they're right on that legal point. They're right. I understand what they're saying. But we don't really want justice. Justice means we get what we deserve. None of us deserve anything good. We're all sinners. We've all fallen short of God's glory. What we want is mercy and grace and peace from God. And we do it by being disciples. Now, the last all I want to talk about this morning is always. Always. We often let our fear prevent us from serving God. We get afraid. We say, let somebody else do that because they're the ones that are equipped. Well, here's the truth. God doesn't uh, call the equipped. He equips the ones that He calls. If He wants you to do something, He will give you the power and the ability to do it. People say, well, I don't want to be a hero. I don't want to step forward. And, and You know, I've known some heroes in my life. I really have. There's a man by the name of Al, friend of my family, friend of, he, he is the father of someone I graduated from high school with. He served in the 3rd Squadron, 4th Cavalry in, uh, in uh, Vietnam. And back then, it would be at three, he was the three-quarter cap, right? And I, I know I, I, my first tour in the Army was 25th Division, and I know the three-quarter cap. He, he served in the three-quarter cap in Vietnam. He was actually a, a tank mechanic. I mean, a track vehicle mechanic. Got wounded three times within three months. And ever since I, that day and all the time I've known him, he's walked with a limp. His, one of his legs is shorter than another. But he was out there doing the right thing, serving his country. Chuck. Chuck was my first platoon sergeant. He, earned, he was awarded a silver star for uh, being the sole survivor of an escort of a convoy when he was with the 4th MP Company in Vietnam. A man by the name of Jeff is a, a fellow who was a missionary in Africa, Africa. And when I knew him, he had had to come home. Because even though he was serving the Lord in Africa, he caught a, 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 a tropical disease that they couldn't figure out what the problem was. And so he was ill and he had to come home. His body was ravaged by that disease. His spirit was still intact, but his body was not. Uh, William Cone is a man that uh, was an administrator of the Jibla Baptist Hospital in Yemen. And William, I met briefly at a conference, sweet man, was gunned down by a, 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 a terrorist in Yemen during an assault on that hospital. So I've known some, some heroes in my time. I knew a fellow once who uh, had earned this, uh, that had been awarded the, you don't earn this, you were awarded the, uh, the Medal of Honor. He was um, E7 in the G4 section, 25th Division, when I was in that unit many years ago. But here's what I found out about all these people. They're all human. Al, my friend's father, had a bad temper. <laughs> I worked for him briefly. It was a bad, he had a bad temper. He had a good man, but he's human, he had a bad temper. Chuck, my first platoon sergeant, had his own stubborn way of doing things. His nickname was Crazy Harold. I'm not sure where that hero part come from, but I know where the crazy part come from. I got that. And then um, Jeff. Jeff was fixated on some real particular theological points, and he'd argue all day with you on that. Good man, but he's human. He wasn't a saint, but none of us are saints. Bill Cohn was just a mild uncle like him. He was, he was like your, your best uncle. Really sweet guy. But that was his major claim to fame, was his service and his sweetness. He, he wasn't anything, and he'd say, it to, he'd say it to you, he's nothing special. 
But each one of these folks were heroes in their own way, and we all can be heroes too when we bow our knee and let God use us the way God wants to use us. Anytime we obey God, and anytime we serve Him, no matter how small, no matter how large, no matter what we face, He is always with us. He will never forsake us. And whatever we have to offer Him, He will use it for His glory and His honor. So like I said, if anybody in this world has ever been all in, it was Jesus Christ. He gave His all so that we would have all these things to be a part of. We would have His authority. We would have His power. We would have that mission of going to all nations. And we would have the comfort of knowing that He's always with us. So the challenge for us today is this. Jesus was all in. He was all in. The question about us is, are we all in? Jesus was all in for us. Are we all in for Him? Pray with me. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for those that were able to gather in this place, uh, these few people who can, we can fit in this conference room this morning. We thank you for those who are maybe, maybe able to watch uh, through Facebook. But we pray your blessings now on all of us that we would serve you and bless your name and that we would be all in for you. Thank you for your love, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning.